Manningham City Council acknowledges the Wurundjeri people as the traditional custodians of the land we now know as Manningham. We pay our respects to Wurundjeri elders past and present and value the ongoing contribution to the cultural heritage of Manningham. I'd like to welcome all the members of the public here tonight to this council meeting who have come along to observe proceedings. I would also like to advise those present that tonight's meeting is being audio and video recorded. All care will be taken to maintain your privacy. However, as a visitor in the public gallery, your presence may be recorded. By remaining in the gallery, it is assumed that your consent is given in the event that your voice and or image is broadcast. Manningham Council would also like to acknowledge the contribution made to Manningham over the years by people of diverse backgrounds and cultures. All council meetings are controlled by a meeting procedure local law. I'll introduce each item of business as listed on the agenda by calling it by number and by reading the title. I will then call for a mover and a seconder of a motion on the item before opening any debate. Only councillors are able to join the debate on an item. Councillors may adopt the officer's recommendations in the report or propose amendments and supplementary motions. I'd like to draw your attention to item I'd like to draw your attention to item seven on tonight's agenda, public question time, which provides people with an opportunity to ask questions of the council. Questions must be registered prior to the commencement of the meeting to be asked. If we do not have the information at hand and provide to provide a meaningful response, the question may be taken on notice and a response provided in writing. I would also stress that I will deal with a maximum of two questions per person and two questions on any one issue. If you have more than two questions, please submit these additional questions in writing to Council through the normal channels. There are no apologies, item two. There are no apologies. Item three, prior notification of conflict of interest. Are there any con notifications of conflict of interest? Through, through you, Mr Mayor, I've received a written disclosure of a conflict of interest from Councillor Michelle Kleinert for item 9.3 concerning planning application PL 16 02 6253 at 121 to 125 James Street, Templestowe, the interest being a direct interest and an indirect interest due to close association. Thank you. Item four, confirmation of minutes. Do I have a mover? Please. Thank you, Councillor McLeish. Do I, have a, do I have a seconder? Thank you, Councillor Haynes. Councillor McLeish. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I move that the recommendation be adopted. The minutes. The the minutes. The I'll get to the right page in a second. Thank you. I move that the minutes of the ordinary meeting of council held on 27th of February 2018 to be confirmed. Should I? Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Haynes. Councillor McLeish, would you like to add? Nothing to add, Mr Mayor. Councillor Haynes, any other speakers against? Put that motion, those four. Thank you, that's carried. Item five, presentations. I'd like to just take a moment to highlight Anzac Day next month. Between now and the 25th of April, Doncaster, Templestowe and Warrandyte RSLs will be selling Anzac badges and holding a number of local events, including the three separate commemorative services on Anzac Day. The service will also be held on Sunday the 22nd <coughs> of April at the Doncaster RSL for people who can't make the Anzac Day service. For those, uh, by supporting these activities, we say thank you to those who have gone before us in service to our country and for those who are still serving. I would encourage everyone to contact your local RSL if you want further information regarding these activities. I'd also like to Bring your attention to some great news for Manningham. 
and that, it, that uh, our transformation and statutory planning team won the overall award for best customer experience achievement of the year for the online review, online view, sorry, payments and lodgements project at last at um, a recent Municipal Association of Victoria Technology Award night. Additionally, our Citizen Connect and Contact Centre team also received a highly commended award in the category of Customer Experience Achievement of the Year. So well done, team. Thank you. Indeed. Item six, petitions. There are no petitions. <laughs> Item seven, public question time. Now, I understand we have received one question from Horst Whisk, Horst, would you like to come to the microphone, please, at the front? Well, first of all, good evening, everyone. My name is Horst Günther Ernst Wieske. I live at Unit 132 Frederick Street, Doncaster, since 1998. Prior to that, I lived in Sellafresh Drive in Manningham Road with an absence of 21 and a half years in Sydney. I am concerned about a subject I've always been concerned and that is the keeping of the nature strips tidy. I am asking the council, why can't the council organise that the nature strips are kept <coughs> in accordance with cleanliness and that people who do not want to have the council do this job opt out. But if they then in turn do not keep that nature strip tidy, they will be fined and the contractor be put in on the job to do it. First of all, it gives work for contractors. And secondly, it keeps our neighborhood nice and beautiful, which Doncaster Templestow has been known for, and which I would like to keep that way, if at all possible. Thank you for your question. Um, could you, you could please, if you, could, you can take your seat. Thank As you. the question relates to council assets, could I ask the Director of Assets and Engineering to please respond? Thank you. Through you, Mr Mayor. Um, I mean, we'd all love to see the municipality look that neat, but basically the cost would be too prohibitive to mow every nature strip within the municipality. And in terms of fining or charging an abutting resident if we were to go and mow a nature strip, well, the problem is that the nature strips are on public land within a road reserve, so we don't have any powers to charge them for that. There was a second part to the question, the written question, which I don't think you mentioned there, and that was about people's front yards. That's right. Um, so as, as far as front yards are concerned, you know, we can take in enforcement action through the local law should one become what's deemed to be unsightly. Excuse the problem. However, it would be best to deal with these on a case-by-case -case basis and we suggest that any concerned resident contacts council about individual sites and the local laws offices will go out and inspect those sites and determine whether they are unsightly and we can take action. Thank you, Lee. Admission of urgent business. There is, one, there is one proposed urgent business item. In order to admit a proposed urgent business item, I would need a mover for that. I'd like to move that, thank you. Do I have a... Yeah, sorry, go on. Yeah, I shall read it out. Uh, that I move that the council admit for consideration as part of item 15, the following item of urgent business, the Alga Motion Affordable Housing. I have a seconder. I second, Mr Moore. Thank you. Would you like to speak to that? No, no, nothing to add. Thank you. Okay, thank you, don't need to, thank you. I'll take a vote then. I'll put that motion, those four. Thank you, that's carried. <coughs> Section 9, Planning Permit Applications, 9.1.
Planning op Application PL1702736 at 5.34 to 5.40 Doncaster Road, Doncaster, for the use and development of the land for an eight-storey building over basement car parking comprising a food and drink premises, cafe, and a retail premises at ground floor level and accommodation above, comprising a residential aged care facility and a retirement village. Do I have a mover for the motion? Councillor Mr. Haynes. Mayor, I move that the officer's recommendation be adopted with the following amendment to the dot point 47 that states eight years to be changed to read eight weeks. Thank you. Do I have a seconder? Thank you, Councillor Galbally. Councillor Haynes, would you like to speak to the motion? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yes, I rise. Um, being an eight-storey building, um, it's always a concern, but um, the good thing about this one is it's on Doncaster Hill, it's on Doncaster Road, and for anyone, councillors, that knows this site, it's the old Papa Rich restaurant. And um, it's a very contemporary design. There's 75 page report, so I'm not gonna go into it. I'm certain that you've read it through. Um, the officers have been working with um, the applicant since um, April last year and prior. Um, and the good news is, and what makes me really excited about this one, that it's actually to do with over 55s only, and it is um, going to be an aged care facility and individual retirement homes uh, within that building. So it's consistent and helps us with our ageing local population. So um, ageing in place here in Manningham is something that um, is needed. And I'm very glad that this isn't one of our normal, just eight storey or um, residential sites, that this is actually going to meet the needs of the existing community here. And I'm hoping for the support of my fellow councillors. Thank you, Councillor Haynes. Councillor Galbally, mm -hmm. thank uh, you to add. Yes, uh, no, Dr. Um, oh, Councillor Haynes. <laughs> Uh, said most of it, but uh, I, I find that this is a great design for um, our uh, newly at, um, viewed premises for um, it, it's connecting the retirement housing and also the aged care facility in the one as well as providing uh, a place to go to for the residents and also visitors with a cafe and um, uh, and the ground floor. And uh, they've actually gone through a lot of um, trouble to sort of make it a, a, a vis visually appealing place as well, with um, the, um, the consideration of putting a sculpture in place and sort of making it a bit more special for the residents. And it, uh, it will be a nice sight for anyone's eyes, I would suspect. So um, I think it's a good design. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Galbally. Are there any speakers against the motion? I'll put that motion, those four. That is carried. Item 9.2, planning application PL1702720 at 136 to 140 Anderson's Creek Road, Doncaster East. Construction of 22 three-storey dwellings. Do I have a mover? <coughs> Thank you, Councillor McLeish. Mr. Mayor, I move that the recommendation be adopted. I have a seconder. Councillor Galbally. Thank you. Councillor McLeish. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, this is a, an interesting development. It's on the court. For those who don't know the location, it is on the corner of Anderson's Creek Road and Reynolds Road. There's currently a medical centre in that location. So if it's opposite um, some fairly large development on the opposite corner, which for, forms part of the Pine Shopping Centre precinct. So this particular site is very well located for medium density housing in this form. We're seeing a proposal that uh, puts forward 22 three-storey dwellings. They're two, three and four bedroom. It's a very sensible proposal. It's quite well laid out. The dwellings are uh, laid out east-west across the site. They're taking advantage of the natural daylight. The, uh, the middle storey above the, above the garages is where the living space is. The top storey is where some the extra bedrooms are. It's quite a sensibly conceived and well laid out development. You're seeing a site coverage of only 56.5%, a garden coverage of 35%, and 
That's a very good balance for a development on this, this size lot. We're talking just under 3,000 square metres. So 22 uh, three-storey dwellings, townhouses on 3,000 square metres, <coughs> it's a pretty good outcome. Uh, and it's certainly, they've done a very good job on the garden layout and the, and the prospective garden design looks very effective. And I think it's going to be a quality addition to this precinct. It's great to see something being proposed that isn't an apartment building, that's separate buildings. You've got double car garages, then there's no nose to tail parking, there's no um, great slabs of concrete around the site in terms of un trying to provide under underground car parking <coughs> and uh, adding to the heat bubble in, in our municipality. <coughs> so I think in the end what we have is a fairly well considered reasonable degree of density on a major intersection within pleasant walking distance to a fairly good shopping centre in the Pines. In fact, an excellent shopping centre in the Pines. If I, if I get heard saying fairly good, I'll probably get um, shot down somewhere. Uh, I use the centre myself regularly and it is a great centre. So I'm pleased to see this development go come to council and I'm pleased to recommend it to my fellow councillors for approval. Thank you, Councillor McLeish. Councillor Galbally. Uh, yes, I would just like to add that I also believe that this is a quality development. Um, it's providing a good range of diversity of housing. It's a bit different to what we've been seeing in that area. I'm, I'm really happy that it's not a, another multi-storey apartment block. Um, and as I said, it's, it's uh, allowing a bit of diversity and um, I hope you all support it. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any speakers against? I'll put that motion, those four, and carried. Thank you. Item 9.3, planning application PL 16026253 at 121 to 125 James Street, Templestow, for the use and development of a four-storey mixed-use building comprising two food and drink premises, two takeaway premises, and one convenience shop at the lower levels, with 35 dwellings to the upper levels, associated basement car parking over two basement levels and alteration of access to a road in a road zone, one cat road zone category one, amended application. Councillors, I wish to disclose that I have a conflict of interest on this item, the interest being both a direct interest and an indirect interest due to close association. I will be leaving the meeting room for the duration of this matter. Do I have a mover for the motion? Mr Mayor, I move as on the paper that the recommendation be adopted. Thank you, Councillor Goff. Do I have a seconder? Thank you, Councillor Piccinini. Councillor Goff, would you like to speak to the motion? Thank you, Mr Mayor, and uh, I'll speak in favour of this particular motion uh, for the development. It's a four-storey apartment building, as you read out, uh, with shops and whatever underneath. It's interesting that it's, it's probably been two years talked about at Council when it was first iterated here over a couple of years ago. And basically around this time, it might have been in a month, it might have been next month, uh, that it was actually was going to be coming to Council and it was withdrawn uh, in that final week before it came to Council uh, because there were a number of uh, things that were, were on it that weren't quite, uh, I suppose, up to what Council wanted. And I think the applicant actually realised that withdrew and then uh, redrew the application uh, for a new particular thing. And it's, as you can see, it's come out here that it is uh, it has been uh, recommended for adoption by council, by the officers here. Uh, I, I think this is a, a, a good building. You know, it does, it does combine a number of things in it with the shops and the residential. At the moment, this land, and it was identified, and I think you really have to look at our Templestow Village structure plan, and it's in the DDO eight areas here, and the structure plan actually identified this site as one for development, and uh, being 2,500 or so square metres, it's quite a large, a large bu uh, building area, um, and one for that shop front and housing on top density. And it is a little bit different, I suppose, to a lot of other 
uh, developments going up around the place in that it has got that very active street front of business within Templestowe Village as well as providing some housing on top and we we don't have many of those uh, those sorts of developments in Manningham and it's quite exciting. I think as you look at this, uh, I think it is a very lovely building that, as it's been designed. And indeed, I, if you were looking <coughs> through the actual uh, contents of uh, the area, you'll see that the site coverage is, is quite large for the building uh, on it in comparison to uh, other, other buildings around, which would be around the 60% or somewhere around there. It's around 88. However, I think the more expensive option of a developer has been used here in that it's got an internal courtyard uh, garden and a lot of the dwellings now actually open to light on both sides with a light, big light well in the middle and light from the outside and indeed a great response in many ways to a planning scheme that actually with flats and units it asks to have natural light into those apartments and buildings. This particular design Although being extremely expensive, it's, ex it's far more expensive to build a garden on top of a, a car park with a concrete and having it all in there and opening it up. And there's a, there's a lot of usable area. Now, if we, and I think this is a great design response because the contrary to that is that we have, instead of a one metre wide path around the whole development, you have a one and a half metre path around the whole development and the whole place, you haven't got any usable space. Here you've got a wonderful usable space that's adding the light. So I'm quite excited about that. And also having those active uses with the convenience store, some food shops and some takeaway places, I think is, is a wonderful thing in that particular precinct, which is known for, I suppose, uh, the party life, I suppose, of Templestowe. It's where you go for a coffee or restaurants and, and whatever. The only thing is it does shut very early uh, in that whole area. But, uh, you know, it does give that particular site a sense of place and in many ways will activate more that side of the road and, and it could go back into the other half of the complex there in Templestowe Village. So it really is realising something that we had written in the structure plan 10 years ago uh, for Templestowe Village. So councillors, I hope you support this particular development. Thank you, Councillor Goff. Councillor Pacini, do you have anything to add? No. Um, Mr Mayor, nothing further to add. Are there any speakers against the motion? I'll put that motion, those four. And carried. Thank you. <coughs> Welcome back. Item 10, planning and environment. 10.1, proposed reform to Victorian planning provisions facilitating residential aged care development. Do I have a mover for that motion? Councillor Zafiropoulos. Uh, Mr Mayor, uh, I move that the recommendation be adopted. Thank you. Do I have a seconder? Councillor McLeish, thank you. Councillor Zafiropoulos, would you like to speak to it please? The state government has proposed changes to the existing planning controls for residential, residential aged care facilities, as the acronym listed in the report, RACF. The purpose of these changes is to streamline the approval process and to facilitate uh, residential aged care facility development in order to meet the rapidly increasing aged care needs, particularly in our municipality. Um, the report states that uh, by 2051, uh, it is estimated that 27% of all Victorians will be older than 60. Many homes uh, over 60 in 2016 at the last census was already 27%, the same percentage that is predicted for uh, the rest of Victoria uh, in 2051, 30 years from now or more. Uh, this 27% uh, that uh, we 
uh, experience uh, in 2016 can be contrasted with 19% for Greater Melbourne. So we're far ahead uh, than uh, the average uh, in other parts of uh, Victoria. So what does that mean? It means that if, we, if the same trends continue, then we could easily expect to have in Manningham one out of three residents in Manningham uh, being over 60, which is an amazing uh, statistic. And it presents, it presents considerable challenges, not only for the federal government and the state government, but for our municipality. It might be 30 years uh, from now. However, that sort of planning for, uh, to tackle such a huge problem requires every level of government to take appropriate steps in order for us to be prepared. The proposed reforms have been examined by our staff uh, who concluded that they're not satisfactory. Key objections include that the reforms fail to address important amenity issues, such as the provision of open space, solar access, etc. Secondly, uh, the proposed controls overlook the need to focus increased densities in areas close to services and public transport. RICF should not be assessed the same way in all residential zones of Manningham. Number three, objection. The maximum proposed height is 13.5 metres and the maximum site coverage uh, proposed is 80%. This needs to be contrasted with 11 metres and 60% coverage in the general residential zone where high density is permitted. Four, the proposed controls do not specify minimum lot size. That means anything goes. Applications for RICF, which meet the requirements, would not need to be advertised, thus denying residents the opportunity for input into the planning process and the right for objection and appeal. Six, Given the recent strengthening of apartment standards, similar high standards should uh, be applied to our ICF developments above four storeys height. And the last objection, and there might be more, despite the similarities between residential aged care facilities and retirement villages, the latter has not been addressed in the reform. So consequently, it is quite appropriate for Manningham Council to oppose the proposed reforms. Thank you, Councillor Zavaropoulos. Councillor McLeish. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, councillors, for giving me a few moments on this one. Um, what we're doing here is we're passing a motion which will put a submission to government on their reforms. And our submission to government is quite critical of their proposed reforms. And it is quite right that we are being highly critical. This municipality has spent a decade refining and tweaking its planning scheme to try and make sure that high density development occurs where there is public transport, where there are shopping facilities, in activity precincts along main roads. This particular proposal by the government, if passed in its current form, would simply allow multi-storey RACF facilities to be put in any of the zones in any of our back streets in Manningham, full stop. They can just go ahead if they meet the government's criteria, no advertising, no community engagement, no community feedback, no opportunity for council to stop it, bang, if it meets the government's rules, in they go build this facility anywhere in the back streets of our municipality other than the low density and green wedge zones. This is an outrageous proposition, councillors. We've very carefully crafted height controls at 11 metres, site coverage at 
and location. The crit most critical of all is location. Location of such high density facilities must be on main roads where there is public transport and where there are community facilities. To put aged care facilities away from that is ridiculous. It's just ridiculous because it is this the exact cohort that wants to use the shopping centres, that's going to want to use public transport. Why would we put them in the boondocks side streets of Manningham where we have quiet residential living and allow, without objection, 80% site coverage up to four storeys residential aged care facilities? It is a ridiculous proposition from this government in its current form. Worse still, this exemption from advertising and no community involvement. Councillors, we have a fairly politely word sub worded submission here to the government as it needs to be for it to be taken seriously by the department. But make no mistake, in my personal view, this is a reform which is needed, but in its current form, it is a disaster for our municipality. 13 and a half metres instead of 11, in our residential streets, 80% site coverage, no opportunity for objection by council laws or community. It's a fail by the government, it's a poor piece of policy, and we need to, re we need to send a strong message to government that this should and must change. It's an election year, now is the time to do it. Thank you, Councillor McLeish. Are there any speakers against the motion? I'll put that motion then, those four. Those carried. <coughs> Item 10.2, Heritage Advisory Committee, review of terms of reference. Do I have a mover? Thank you, Councillor Piccinini. Um, I move that the recommendation be adopted. Do I have a seconder? Thank you, Councillor Kleinert. Councillor Piccinini. Mr Mayor, this is a fairly simple motion and that is that we um, adopt the revised terms of reference for the Heritage Advisory Committee. Um, the terms of reference were revised by Council and the actual committee in accordance with our policy, um, our Council policy, and there's some key changes to the terms of reference which there are four and I'll mention. And that is that the membership of the committee is to include a representative of the Wonga Park His History Group. Um, the number of community representatives are reduced from three to two. Um, the inclusion of a requirement that the terms of reference are reviewed every four years. Um, and there's also provision for a maximum term of for community members and that's three terms of three years each. So, um, I, um, I seek that the recommendation be adopted. Thank you, Councillor Pacini. Councillor Kleinert, any speakers against the motion? I'll put that motion. I just have a question. Sure. A clarification, was the, um, um, the way that the, we've now written this up, was that taken to the Heritage Committee at all? It yep. was? Yep. That's what I thought. Yeah, I just, I thought, yep. thank you. Okay, I'll put that motion. Those four, thank you. Those against, gets carried. Item 11, assets and engineering, item 11.1. 285 to 287 George Street, Doncaster, sale of parked road reserve. Do I have a mover for the motion? That the recommendation be adopted. Thank you, Councillor Kleinert. Do I have a seconder? Thank you, Councillor McLeish. Councillor Kleinert, would you like to add anything? Councillor McLeish? Nothing. Are there any speakers against? I'll put that motion. Those four. Thank you. That is carried. Item 12, community programs. 12.1, community care services <coughs> update. Do I have a mover? Thank you, Councillor Kleinert. Let the recommendation be adopted. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Galbally. Councillor Kleinert? Nothing to add. Councillor Galbally. Any speakers against? I'll put that motion. Those four. That is carried. Thank you. Sorry. 12.2, Access and Equity Advisory Committee, in Terms of Reference 2018. Do I have a mover? 
Councillor Zafiropoulos. I move that the, uh, the recommendation be adopted. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Chen, thank you. Councillor Zafiropoulos. Uh, the Access and Equity Committee, like many of uh, the Council's committees, plays a very important role in that it provides advice to Council about uh, its responsibility to provide our services and programs in an accessible and inclusive uh, way, uh, and therefore it's an important committee. Um, I had uh, the privilege to serve on the committee before becoming a councillor, and now I'm very proud that uh, this year I'm chairing uh, the committee. Uh, like other committees, uh, as uh, Councillor Bicinini mentioned, the Heritage Committee, uh, the Access and Equity Committee needed to revise uh, its terms of reference, and this is what this particular report does. Uh, there are four uh, changes to, to the terms of reference. One is the alignment of uh, the committee's governance processes uh, with all the other committees the extending of the tenure term from two to three years, as all the other committees, and reducing the number of community representatives from 20 to 16. As we all appreciate, having 20 members other than the councillors and all the other staff makes it uh, a little bit hard to manage. Uh, however, uh, 16 might sound a bit large to uh, some of us, Nevertheless, uh, the, this committee has got such a diversity of issues to consider that it is important that every sector affected by the committee is represented on the committee. And the last thing is, um, as all the other committees, uh, it's been resolved to publish the committee's minutes in the uh, Council's website. I strongly recommend that we accept uh, and endorse the committee's references and any action which results as a subsequent of that change. Thank you. Councillor Chen, do you have anything to add? Uh, yes, I just want to say that, Mr Mayor, that I used to be a committee member for about nine years before I came to Council. So I have seen firsthand the passion and the contribution the members make to council. So my fellow councillor, uh, Zafiropoulos, have said it all about the updated terms of reference, including the uh, making the minutes public and the uh, extension of the terms, of ref uh, uh, terms from two to three years. And um, I support the updated terms of reference and uh, I also wish to take this opportunity to encourage our residents to put their hands up to be part of this important SS and Equity Advisory Committee. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Chen. Are there any speakers against the motion? I'll put that motion, those four. That is carried. Item 13, shared services. There are no shared services reports. Item 14. Chief Executive Officer, item 14.1, Manningham Quarterly Report, Quarter 2, 2018. Do I have a mover? Councillor Goff? Move that the recommendation be adopted. Thank you. Do I have a seconder? Councillor McLeish. Councillor Goff? Thank you very much, and uh, I'm very happy to get up here and uh, talk about this quarterly report, which came due, I suppose it was the October to December one, so we're talking about halfway through the year. Uh, of the financial year, that is, uh, of work that's being done. And I, again, I just want to say how wonderful the set out of this report is, not just for councillors. If you want to, you can find out more information, but for community to really get a quick grab of a lot of information about the welfare and the health of our organisation very quickly and easily in this graphic form. And uh, it, is, it is absolutely wonderful. So, uh, again, congratulations to the, the people that came up with that uh, set out because it makes it easy to look through. And it actually allows you to say, well, all right, there are a couple of things that we need to look at and quickly identify them. I do want to talk, uh, I suppose, about a couple of things because uh, it does, uh, I suppose, 
point out the fact that, yeah, at this particular point, there are some projects that haven't got done under the Capital Works or whatever, but they're quickly in here. There are some reasons why they are, and hopefully by the time we get this next quarterly report, all of those uh, elements will have come online again. But I do want to uh, celebrate something here with regard to an important thing that I think uh, we all need to celebrate and the community need to understand is that we do respond to things and problems to fix them and solve them. That's the important thing. The fact that we've got a problem isn't the problem. It's what we do about a problem. And if, we, if we're all committed to actually work on it and fix it, then that's what, that's what anyone in the community only wants and expects things do happen. Now, it's interesting that we've had some government surveys, and they're very good, not to blame or put a hierarchy on councils, good councils, bad councils, or whatever, but when you have surveys and, and th things from across all council, that, what it does is it lets you look at areas that you might stand out in that is different to the others. And one of those areas that we were coming short on, as far as that survey was concerned, was statutory planning. And uh, that meant that not that we whip people, but the fact that we say, all right, there must be something in here that we need to look at. And I think Manningham, and that's the response. And, and I think any community can be very happy when a, when a council does respond to indicators that it is given, instead of sort of saying, oh, well, you know, bad luck, or, you know, that's the way it is here, or whatever. We have worked on it, and councillors, I think it's, it's really worth looking at page, uh, I think it's 278. And... Um, uh, in, in, in your reports, and really it does celebrate here, I suppose, a change. And if you actually look at those little bar graphs, uh, the grey ones were last year, and the, uh, the, the red ones are this year. Uh, so if we can actually start at uh, quarter three, and then quarter, f uh, sorry, quarter, quarter four. So we're, we're starting from three and four. So we're starting probably up to that quarter four would be the um, end of June, all right, last year, uh, in the decisions made within the 60-day time limit. And, you know, it's for the, a lot of the early part of that last year, we were down at, um, what was it, 20, was it? No, it's more than that. Anyway, uh, 25. 25, yeah. And, anyway, and, and we've shot up, and then we're continuing to improve. And let's hope we can continue to improve uh, as, as we go, go on here, because that is an important area for the reputation <coughs> of council, and it's an important area for community, and it's an important area for not just uh, residents and other people for decisions, but any businesses or anyone else that is actually investing in something. It's not whether the decision is yes or no, it's whether it's made quickly or not and on time, and getting all of those things together. So uh, that, that's a very proud little piece of work that we can put here, and we look forward to seeing how that graph continues. And it, doesn't, it, it does need to continue up, but it will plateau at some stage, where we get to a stage where there are some cases in this particular area, and everyone understands this, that there are some uh, planning applications, things, that do go over time because of their complexity and because of a whole range of other reasons. But if we can set that bar at that very high level, that is really good. So I'd like to congratulate the uh, organisation on their, on their work. And this here really gives a p uh, community a, a glimpse of you know, our finances, our capital works, our major projects that we're doing over the particular time, and also uh, what we've set the CEO's performance indicators on the organisation as. And uh, it's really good, and it's all online. So thanks very much. Thank you, Councillor Goff. Councillor McLeish. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I can only echo some of the points that were just made, because the most st outstanding item in this particular report is indeed the outcome on planning. It's been said that the ship of state turns slowly. Well, we as a council set about trying to rectify the um, productivity and performance of the planning, a number of areas of our organisation, but planning was a key one, because we certainly understood that um, investment in this area was needed. Part of that is investment ha is reflected in the technology award that we just received, which is for technology that our own staff have implemented within our planning department over the last 18 months. Those are initiatives that were begun at the tail end of the last council. Significant investment in information technology. 
being delivered across the organisation, but specifically also in the planning department. And great work by the CEO and his executive team in delivering on the objectives laid out by this council to improve the performance of our planning department. We knew the stats that were coming out in the government report. Those are lagging indicators because they are 12 months behind. What you're seeing before you is the current data. You are seeing data that shows in Q4 the performance went close to doubling, Q4 being um, June quarter last year. We go into Q1 this year and Q2 this year, that's the top part. You can see that we are doing 60 to 70% of decisions made within 60 days. That is near enough to two to three times the performance from a year prior. That is a substantial improvement by the organisation and a great reflection of the effort that they're putting in. And you should note that the graph above it shows you the volume of applications. And if you have a look at that volume of applications, you'll t it will tell you that the volume of applications remains at record highs. So this isn't fancy fudging numbers, this is real improvement in performance on high volumes of planning applications. We are in the upper echelon of planning applications, we're not right up the top, thank goodness, per, in councils in Victoria, but we are in the, upper, in the upper ranges and we are seeing great performance by the organisation in delivering improved productivity and improved responsiveness to people in our community. And it doesn't matter whether you're doing a little bit of a deck or a major planning development, we have exactly the same amount of time, whether it's an apartment block or a deck on the back of a house. We have exactly the same number of days to accept, assess these things in and the team is, in my view, doing an excellent job of improving their productivity under the stewardship of the CEO and the executive team, and they're to be heartily congratulated for their performance. Thank you. I had one other point that I wanted to touch on. I noticed uh, maybe the, the, the head of assets and engineering can answer my question on this one. Did the 6,000 streetlights get replaced by the end of, uh, around the end of this last year? Three years, Mr Mayor, yes they did. So we've now replaced installed 6,000 LED lights, beautiful timing because the power rates have just escalated yet again. Again, a great piece of work brought forward by this council to accelerate uh, the reduction in greenhouse gas and a reduction in operating costs by investment of wisely of capital in our community. Well done. Thank you, Councillor McLeish. Are there any speakers against the motion? I'll put that motion, those four, and carried. Thank you. Item 14.2, Strategic Risk register, register, six months report, 31st of December 2017. Do I have a mover? Councillor Kleinert. That the recommendation be adopted. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Haynes. Councillor Kleinert. Councillor Haynes. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, any speakers against? I'll put that motion, those four, and carried. Thank you. Documents, oh, sorry, item 14.3, documents for sealing. Do I have a mover? Councillor Haynes. I move that the alternative motion be adopted. Thank you. Do I have a seconder for that? Thank you, Councillor Piccinini. Councillor Haynes, would you like to? Nothing. Councillor Piccinini. Nothing to add. Any speakers against? I'll put that motion. In favour? Yeah, yeah, in favour. <laughs> yeah, it's... Oh, yeah. <laughs> Someone jumped the gun. That's all right. In favour. That's carried. Thank you. Um, 14.4. Record, record of assembly of councillors. Do I have a mover? Thank you, Councillor Pichini. I move that the recommendation be adopted. Thank you. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Chen. Councillor Piccinini. Nothing to add. Councillor Chen. Nothing to add, Mr Mayor. Any speakers against? I'll put that motion, those four. And that is carried. Item 15, urgent business, which is item 15.1, ALGA motion on affordable housing. Do I have a mover? Thank you, Councillor Chen. Mr Mayor, I move that the recommendation be adopted. Thank you.
Do I have a seconder? Councillor Galbally. Councillor Chen, would you like to speak to the motion? Yes, just speak shortly. <laughs> and we all know that the National General Assembly is Australia's largest and most influential gathering of local councillors and officials. And um, with the possible federal election being called next year, and I think that it's a good opportunity to speak up on behalf of our constituents. And uh, we all notice that uh, our population growth, the low wage growth, increased demand for housing and competition for accommodation have all made housing less affordable. And the uh, council has been advocating for affordable housing wherever possible. So I ask my fellow councillors' support to endorse this motion for the General Assembly. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Gabby? Um, I would add something. Very short. Um, look, affordable housing is, um, I think all of us here know that it's not social housing as such. It is, it is looking at affordable housing for those of us who uh, cannot afford uh, the current um, stock that's out there in housing. Um, but also it, it, to look at people that are you know, on the marginal side of the income stream. and uh, We have to look at um, uh, young adults with disabilities and um, as well as um, uh, the low income earners or the, um, I, th I think it's recorded where, where the public service people that are on a lower income bracket, like your police, your nurses, and we don't want to lose them in our inner city environments um, to go to um, outer reaches just so they can afford their housing. So it's not just a council and a local issue, this is a state and federal issue as well. And, it, and we can only really get some real traction here if all three levels of government uh, form together and to sort of uh, make a strong stand on this one. So um, uh, by us putting a motion out to ALGA, it, uh, it cements our stand a bit stronger and I'm sure other councils will be um, probably putting uh, similar motions as well. So um, I'd like to support this one, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Galbally. Any speakers against? I'll put that motion, those four, and carry. Thank you. Item 16, councillors' question time. Are there any questions from councillors? Nope. Item 17, confidential reports. There are no confidential reports. There be no, be, being no further items, I'll close the meeting. Thank you, everyone, for your attendance.